Chase Martin here at Jake Tech. We're going to kind of do a little bit of a, a tour and inspection of this, of the hydraulic system here on this Peterbilt uh, car transporter. Uh, we're going to start here with both, what both people look at is going to be your valve. This is what the operator is going to do is raising and, low, raising and lowering. Uh, you see it's got a pressure valve on here. So that way the operator can ensure that he's operating it and not exceeding, as the system states, 1800 PSI. Um, he's got the five different actuators, actually in reality six. So this first actuator is going to control the forward cylinders up front. So we're going to go take a gander at those. And up here, what we're going to look for on these, you can trace the lines, starting from underneath the cab, coming out to the properly zip tied. Make sure they're not going to grab anything, they're not just flapping and blowing in the breeze. Touch and feel it, looking for any dry rot, blowing, looking for any leaks. Climb up a little bit up here. Not hurt myself. Again, looking at the cylinder, making sure there's no leaks out of the fittings. These are a little on the rusty side, so it would be a good idea to take a wire brush to them. Give them a little bit of coat of paint. Tie right here. That one's broken. Don't need that. This one's still on there. This one's not moving very good, very much at all. So this cylinder's in a good spot. Look at the ramrod. A little bit of excess of oil. So that means the white ring right here is starting to wear. So that one there needs a little bit of a, probably some rebuild on that individual cylinder. But overall, it's not that bad. It's still probably fulfill its duty. Obviously, you can go to the other side and do the same thing on the other side, being that it has two cylinders per. Next one is the control valve to your actuator for your middle, so the middle actuator. That's the longer one here. As you see these lines, they're loose. So if he was operating something up in here, get the, uh, the cables tight, the straps tight, you might catch them. So it would be a good idea to have these zip tied in. The biggest problem I see on this cylinder right here is the bad, uh, the, the, the rust in the uh, corrosion on the, uh, the, the chrome, the chrome ramrod. As you raise and lower this cylinder, all these bits uh, of pitting and corrosion and rust, uh, chrome is going to chew up your wear ring right here, creating leaks real quick. Uh, so this cylinder right here, we either want to replace the whole cylinder ramrod or take it, have it disassembled, set out to a uh, chrome shop, so that way they can clean it up and chrome it up. If it's minor, some of the smaller spots, you can get some, uh, some memory cloth, some real fine stuff, sandpaper, uh, or steel wool works real well on chrome too. Clean it all up, and then that way you can do it. This one here is past that cleanup stage. That is in the point of replacement. And then again, you can expect the same one on the other side from here. That ramrod looks pretty good. Uh, again, looking at the fittings, looking for any leaks, any holes, any other dents in the cylinder, that would create, or that would prevent the ramrod the center of the, uh, the ram valve, which is a large piece connected to the ramrod, moving jet, moving properly. Uh, we're going to skip these two here because they look there, so we're going to go to this next cylinder right along here. Again, continuing from here, going backwards towards the truck. Even on this valve here, you're going to want to look at all the lines. Look at all the lines and fittings. See how they're routed. See where any dry rots, any breaks in the hose, any major kinkage. And then how they're free will and not, not secured to anything. See, there used to be some zip ties here that held everything together. So these would all need to be re-zip tied or rerouted along the inner rail of this truck. And then you got this lower extension cylinder. Right here, again, same concept, check the fittings, check the secureness of your clevis pins down here, and your uh, counter pin or your uh, securing pin. And this is bad, it's all going to get caught, caught up by a car as the rear moving around. So that's how you check there. And here's that last lift cylinder, which is the number three that we skipped. There's one on each side. You see here, there must have been a break in the hose when they actually had to redo the hose or they made it too short initially, so they had to put an extension on it. Fully feasible to do. So if you get a break in the hose, 
You don't want to replace the whole thing, you can take it to a shop, just put two new ends on it, and carry on. And that's why some of the importance of securing the hose in place, away from other away from other damage, get your pinch, get your cut. Unlike this one here, this one's way too low, way out of way out of words for me. Again, the upper portion of that cylinder is bad, so that's definitely going to be a problem. And then you'd expect the other cylinders the exact same way. Well, the extension cylinder again, you got it all zip tied, so that's a fairly clean look. The anti-chafing guard. This stuff's important again to help prevent any burrs, nicks, and cuts, or anybody accidentally pinching it too tight and getting to a pinch point. Available, auto parts stores, uh, nationwide, so that way you can get it, and put it on, and protect your hoses. And it's a good idea to put them on almost any hose. Uh, we already checked here. Let's go down here to the fuel. The... Most likely you're gonna look at this thing, it's just a fuel cell. Right here you're gonna see a well. This portion of it is the fuel cell. This portion right here though, this is your hydraulic, your hydraulic reservoir. Up on top of this reservoir, I know it's a little hard to see. You got a vent right in here to relieve any excess pressure and heat. As this hydraulic fluid is used and heated, it's going to build a little bit of pressure in the expansion of the fluid. So a little relief valve up on top. Right here is your fill plug. So if you need to ever fill in your hydraulic fluid, go right in through there. We're going to keep it closed. We don't want any introduce any debris that we don't need to. But anyway, your return line is going to be right up on top. So again, you want to look, make sure that hose clamp's on there. Check in the hose, looking for any leaks and debris. This is a little dirty. We go down underneath this tank on the back side, right here. Is your uh, feed line? It's on your feed line again. Looking for any uh, kinks and debris. Any leaks, any, uh, any damage to it. Here's a drain if you ever had to drain it. So again, making sure there's no leakage. And now we're gonna go underneath and check on the pump. All right, up underneath to here. Again, this is gonna be your portion of the tank. So this way again, you can see your main feed line right here. And while you're under here, we're going to check the pump in a second. Looking at all these hydraulic lines, and while you're under here, you can also inspect any electrical uh, air or fuel lines while you're looking at it, and any other things, looking for any excess damage or wear. So anyway, right up off of here, off of your transmissions your PTO, that right there can be mechanically, electronically, or pneumatically controlled uh, to engage your pump. So we're going to go up there and inspect the lines, uh, inspect the mounting hardware for the transmission, the PTO to the transmission, um, and you just, just get your overall serviceability out there. Alright, so this is your, your pump right here. This is connected to the PTO, which the PTO is then connected to your transmission. So checking the mounting hardware, there's a little bit of oil leakage coming from the tranny around the PTO, so that's something you want to watch out for. Making sure the seal, making sure the hydraulic pump's connected. Your two fluid lines, your, uh, your, in -line, your service line in and then your return line. This one here has got a little bit, uh, it's hard to tell if this is oil or hydraulic fluid at this point. Could be either one. So. You want to clean this off with some brake cleaner, some degreaser, get it all nice and clean, so that way you can get a good inspection of it. Could just be a little bit of excess grease from the uh, lubrication. Um, check your airline right here for your PTO. Make sure it's serviceable, um, so that way it's properly engaged. Because this one here is pneumatically controlled. Um, so looking up in here for serviceability. Like I said, there's a little bit of oil on there, so you may want to possibly bring your next service, place some of these gaskets um, or O-rings up around here, depending on what's leaking from here. All right, so now we're gonna, again, follow these lines back and inspect these lines, which are extremely dirty. But still, you're looking for, even with the road corrosion, the road grime, looking for any cuts or major signs of hydraulic leakage. So you're following your, these two hoses here, plus it also goes on to some other hoses, which 
these some of the ones to feed back up to. Hydraulic components to the forward portion of it. Those hydraulic cylinders forward. And also it's routing with all the fuel lines. A lot of debris underneath here. You can definitely use a pressure washer. Lines all look good. Back into here. Next right here, we got a shutoff valve. So we want to check for the serviceability on that. The reason there's probably a shutoff valve on here is right here's your filter and here's your strainer. The filter's on your feed line. So as it comes up out of the pump, uh, out of the uh, reservoir, suction that's created by the pump is pulling this fluid out of the reservoir up here through the filter, up and over along the lines to the pump. Upon, and then the pump goes to supplies, your valve system up there, your controls, and then it goes from there all the way to the cylinders, and then all the, any of the excess from there, it's getting routed back, it gets dumped in through a strainer, back into your reservoir. So, if you're going to change out this filter, it'd be helpful to turn this off, so make sure you're not leaking any, you go disconnect this thing, and the hydraulic level may be higher than the filter, and then you end up draining out your foot, and that would be bad. That one's functioning. These filters, again, they're a little dirty. These are important to check on a regular basis, especially being under here, available to the elements, and also any possible debris. If you're going to run over an old tire, an old rope gator laying in there, these can easily be damaged and destroyed. And then you're losing hydraulic fluid and uh, creating some uh, problems that the EPA and OSHA wouldn't like. Um, so, uh, again, there's hoses and fittings all throughout underneath here as they run back to the back of the truck. Uh, we'll go see one more connection back at the rear, and that should conclude the, uh, the inspection of this portion of the video. Alright, so right in here, we have the trailer connections. Being this is a car carrier, it's going to usually, as you see them on the road, they have a trailer right there. They also use the hydraulic system from the truck. 90% of the time, or at least on this application, they're also going to have its own valve body set up there, the control levers. Right here, you normally have a platform. Model right here, which is where your traditional type trailer hookup or fifth wheel for it would be. You got your two airlines, you got your electrical connection. More importantly for us, we got the male and female hydraulic quick disconnect system. So on this one here, you want to check to make sure that the push them in. Being that the system has no pressure in it, push them in. Make sure they're not plugged, not plugged. That one there is not wanting to move. Using this one here should be spring loaded. Again, that one's not wanting to move, so that one's kind of on the frozen side. Some of them do have a little detent pin that you may have to align properly. That doesn't seem to be the one. So that one there probably needs to be replaced prior to again hooking up the trailer. But maybe this is the model for the school. You cut the plate off, whatever, and hook up the trailer. But it still should be replaced in the way. Um, that's another one of the important part, checking the connections here. And then if you have the trailer, checking all the pieces of the um, So, again, you want to do that on a regular basis, uh, at least monthly, checking all the security of your stuff that's going down the road, things can move, things can dry rot in the heat, the sun, especially the plastic and the rubber uh, hoses. They all dry rot and as the vibrations move and the weight, you shift everything. So, hope you saw, uh, you provided some information, you learned something, so if you got any comments, leave them below. Have a great day.